Hey everybody, Steve here coming back again with another video for you all. This one is going to be my favorite hike that I've done so far. Fortunately, if you're in California, you're going to have to go to Seattle to do it. So I'm sorry about that. But the trail is going to be called Colchuk Lake via Stewart Lake Trail. And it was a beautiful, amazing trail. If you guys are new here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, I appreciate you so much for continuing to come back. Um, I'm, so I want to be showing you first is first what I thought was the best views and then I'm going to go into detail breakdown of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope to see you at the end of it. All right, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. So now let me give you a detailed breakdown of the hike. So I track all my hikes two ways through the All Trails app and through my Apple Watch. So according to the All Trails app, it was 8.6 miles. Elevation, elevation gain was 2,316 feet. Moving time was 5 hours and 35 minutes. Total time was 5 hours and 48 minutes. Calories burned 2,912. According to my Apple Watch, it was 9.82 miles. Elevation gain was 2,655. Total time was 5 hours and 49 minutes. Active calories was 1,439. Total calories was 2,064 and an average 90 beats per minute. Um, right off the bat, I want to say I did this hike in the colder months of Seattle. Uh, so it was still really, really cold and I believe it snowed. Um, so I went when it was roughly about 27 degrees to 30 degrees. Um, but even before then, one thing I want to mention, if you are planning to do this hike, is that you will feel kind of lost getting there. So I um, use the All Trails app to navigate me to where to start. So 
you're gonna feel like you're going into like the boonies and somewhere like where you're not gonna get reception as well. So be prepared for that. Um, also, make sure you bring a pen, make sure you bring um, some cash as well. That's gonna be really important just because you have to pay for parking there and you have to put it in like a little bin. And I had to ask, fortunately there was somebody there when I was hiking and I was asked, and I asked them if I could borrow a pen so I can just put in uh, my license plate and just my information so they don't take in my car as I'm there. So please be prepared if you're planning on doing this hike and you're following the Ultras app, have a pen, have some cash, just because you're gonna have to put in an envelope and then just sign your name and sign some information for your car. So because I did this hike when it was really, really cold, around like 27, that's 30 degrees, as I said before, is my biggest takeaway is please be prepared to layer up. So I had a thermo underneath, I had two sweaters, long sleeve, and I believe I had another shirt I had also um, a hat on. So I was pretty, pretty layered up, uh, but even then I was cold in the beginning. Obviously you're gonna get warm as you keep, keep going through this hike. Um, but just make sure you're layering up in the beginning because probably as you're going to get warmer, warmer, you're going to start taking off some layers just because you're going to feel too hot. So please just make sure you do have enough layers in the beginning. As I said in the beginning of the video, this was has been by far my favorite hike just because of the reward at the end of what you see at the lake. Um, at, at, in terms of difficulty, I would say this is probably like a 9 and 10. This was really, really difficult. Um, I think the total time is what makes this really difficult. Hiking for about almost six hours, the total moving time, I think um, drains you a lot. And especially when you're going in the winter time. So if you are planning on doing this hike and you want to kind of prepare yourself for it and you're doing it in the winter time, is to please start doing about like seven to 10 mile hikes with either increasing an elevation gain or it has a lot of incline just so you can get prepared for that. One of the things um, specifically in Kolchak is that you're constantly going up and up. So one of the things of uh, Kolchak is that you're constantly going up and up in incline. So you're gonna have to get used to that and your condition is gonna have to be there and also uh, your body's gonna, you're gonna want your body used to that. So I would recommend doing seven to 10 mile hikes, making sure they're increasing elevation gain and also have a pretty good incline or at least consistently inclining just so you get your body used to that. This is for sure a hike that I would say I would have wanted to visit in the summertime. Um, but if you are doing it in the wintertime, just because you want to see the snow and experience uh, cold chuck in the wintertime, um, I will say you're probably not going to be able to fully enjoy the lake as much as you would like to. Um, when I when I got to the end and I was able to see Kolchuk Lake, it was beautiful, it was gorgeous. I sat down, I relaxed a little bit, but I couldn't do it for too long. Probably the most that I did it for was maybe 30, 35 minutes at most. And the reason being is because once you're stopping, sitting down and enjoying the lake and seeing everything around you, your body is cooling down. And when your body starts cooling down, you're going to have to hike back as well. So you're going to have to build that warmth that you did throughout the hike all over again. And also because it's so long, it's about five hours, um, the day goes by pretty quickly. And as it starts getting closer to nighttime, the temperatures start dropping as well. So now it's probably getting even colder as you're starting to hike back down. Um, so this is probably a great hike to do in the summertime, just because you can probably go swimming a little bit, enjoy it a lot more, uh, be able to relax her. Um, a lot longer. Um, so if you do want to enjoy the lake as much as possible, this will probably be best for you if you go in the winter time. So if you reach this far, you know that I do love food. So I do have a food recommendation for you all. Um, my food recommendation is going to be in a place called Levensworth or Levensworth. I think it's, yeah, it's Levensworth. Um, and it was a beautiful little place. Um, it reminds me a lot of Germany and I think it is, it is German inspired. Um, I did go to Oktoberfest a few years back in, in Munich, Germany, and this really gave me that same vibe and same feel of it, and it was gorgeous and beautiful. So I do recommend um, if you are doing this hike, you can stop by Levensworth, explore there. It's a beautiful little town. It's gorgeous. You can uh, just walk around there. Um, and if you do want to grab, grab a bite to eat, I would recommend stopping by Yodelin. So one of the things that I was looking for right after this hike is because one, I was starving because it was so long it was almost six hours also the drive so it was for sure over six hours since i've had like a full meal um, i wanted something warm because it was cold and i wanted something filling um so one of the first things i looked for i was like let me see they got some soups and they got some burgers so yodelin had this when i went and the two food recommendations that i would recommend is their soup the yodelin soup and also their form stand burger. So their yodelin soup is a curry soup with some udon noodles. And this was, I will say, out of the two, 
I enjoyed it the most. And that was probably because I was so cold. I was trying to warm up just because I just did on a hike and was driving down and it's cold all over. So I'm like, I want something cozy, something warm. But this soup was a delicious, this curry soup. The only thing similar that I can think of this was actually in Thailand when I did have a ton of curry when I was there. And this gave me flashbacks of that. So much flavor, um, had some zest into it. It was perfect for the cold winter time that I went to. So if you are going in the winter time, get the yodelin soup. It's going to be so warm and cozy and delicious. You're not going to regret it. And I also want to mention the farm stand burger, which I did have as well. It was a, it was a third pound burger. Delicious. Had some uh, aioli sauce and condiments on it. It was so, so good. Um, I will say probably I wish that this was not a third pound burger. I wish it was a half pound burger because it was that good. I finished it way too quickly. Had some fries or chips. You can decide which one. Uh, but out of the two, honestly, that yodelin was just, that yodelin soup was so good just because, again, it was really cold. I wanted something warm. But the, not, not to say the burger was not good at all because it was so good as well. You can probably just get two, honestly. After this hike, doing it that long, hiking for about five hours or so, you can reward yourself and just order both of them as well. But if you do try Yodelin and you try either the Yodelin soup or the farm stand burger, let me know in the comments what you think, because I thought that both were delicious. Maybe it was because I was starving as well, but the flavor was just the Yodelin soup and the burger was just so good. Farm stand burger, because it was like grass fed. It was also delicious. Oh yeah. You, I'm, I'm getting hungry just thinking about it again. But again, if you, you do either the hike or you stop by Levensworth and you eat at Yodel, let me know in the comments what you think. If you enjoy the hike, um, if you did it, um, did you think it was helpful for me giving you all this information? Was it as hard as I said? Um, if you do the, if you do stop by Yodel, did you get the soup? The soup was delicious. Did you get the burger as well? It was so good. Let me know in the comments. With all that being said, I want to say thank you for watching. I appreciate you watching all the way through. Uh, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and also go follow me on my other social media accounts, Steve Don Hernandez SJ. I'll leave a link down below as well. And please, everybody, stay safe and take care.